Chloe, I'd knock you through the letterbox in five minutes if you give half the chance. And the problem is my Willie wouldn't get through the letterbox. I, it'd get caught on that furry bit of the thing. I'd be like, I'd be like Chloe, is it in yet? He'd be like, no. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Couples Quarantine episode... 14, I think it is. 14. Um, today, we have an old friend of mine... A uh, journalist, he's an author, he's a DJ, and he's a broadcaster, and he's the first gay man we have had on Couples Quarantine. Well, what? Yes, <laughs> certainly won't be the last, but this is my friend, Sam Dowler. Hi, thank you for having me. The first gay in the village. <laughs> the first gay in the Couples Quarantine village. How do you feel about this honour? Well I, well, I better not let my people down. <laughs> I think it's too late for that, babe. Although, do you know what? I got a new producer the other day and he um, and he was saying, to, he's he's a gay boy, and he was saying how much he loves the Kardashians and he doesn't like any movies made before 2000. And I was like, uh-oh. I can't uh-oh. stand the Kardashians and I love old movies. I, I should probably intercept here and just tell everybody, including James, because you this is the first time you've met Sam. Well, I, I heard the reason I wanted you on, Sam, is I heard a voice message you left, Chloe, and I was like... <laughs> I need that guy in my life. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, what did I say? And I, I don't know what it was, but it's very funny. You and called I was like, someone an old bin, and James was immediately like, "Well, that's my new best friend." <laughs> I was like, "He sounds exactly as me. Is that like I do? Very, very bitchy. Uh, slightly, like, slightly more camp, but depending on what night of the week it is. Um, and, yeah. and how much you've had to drink? And how exactly? Ain't exactly. that the truth? Well, we we can actually come on to this. But Sam, why don't you um, introduce yourself? Tell everybody how we know each other. Tell everybody what you do, and yeah. and then. We'll go from there. Okay, so um, I'm Sam Dowler. Hi. Um, <laughs> I used to work in the music industry years ago, and then, um, which was really fun. And then I changed, and I went for a job in New York actually. And ooh, it was some gross old pedo who tried to touch me, and I didn't like it. So um, I then well, came Harvey back. Weinstein. I thought he was into <laughs> women. I went, I went, I went for a job with Weinstein. No, it was it was somebody else. I mean, he might end up watching this, so I know who you are. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, so I came back and I got a job as a, uh, because I knew lots of celebs and stuff, I got a job as a columnist on Now Magazine. So I used to go to various showbiz parties and um, cover Hang out with things. me. And that's when I met Chloe and we went, <laughs> when she when she was doing Dancing on Ice. And uh, I actually I actually went and stayed up, um, well, where was it? Nottingham, I think it was. Oh, and, you came um, all the way to come and, and I was, see me. And I was, and I was guest judge on the show. And I got booed by 10,000 people. I loved it. <laughs> and um yeah we just and we just got we just got really messy that night and I, I remember coming down to the ice rink because I was going to do an interview the next day and then and I and Torval and Dean were like over the other side of the ice rink and they were like you're right <laughs> oh god like, they've lo- seen it all on that loads of, and then everyone who I saw was like Sam, you, you're right. <laughs> I'd, I'd also smashed myself in the face with a remote control at some point in the evening. I mean, it was just a, it was a big old mess. Well, you I say mean, it was a remote control, but I mean... <laughs> it was definitely pointy. Um, <laughs> but so we've, we've been friends ever since. And um, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen you in like, well, about a year or maybe two years. I saw you, um, I saw you, you didn't see me. I saw you at Pride, both of you actually. Oh God, I was. But uh, James, James was mobbed. So I did say Chloe, Chloe, but like there was, there was no, it was no use. Yeah, and also I was not compass at all. We'd been drinking since like ten a.m. Yeah. So we went, we ended up going to Soho House, Greek Street, and just met for like a leisurely champagne breakfast. Got steaming, yeah. put all the put all the glitter on, and then and then I was basically p- passed around like a bag of sweets <laughs> in, school, in a ch- children's playground. It was there was at one point where I had to go. Chloe, I just need a time out here. I have never been more groped. Were in you... in... <laughs> Honestly. It was amazing. But no, do you know, I it. thought, no, but I did, I did think of that because I mean, I mean, although I get it, it's, it's not, I mean, if you took a girl to like somewhere and she was literally groped Mom. by thousands of men, obviously they'd all end up going to jail. But like, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, James is a big guy, but I, I've never been into the whole. I don't think you should grab someone. I don't, I mean, no, whether you're gay or whether you're gay or not. It is an interesting. It is an interesting point because I, you know, obviously, um, I think a lot of people uh, initially in the start of my career assumed that you know a meathead that I would probably that I would probably have homophobic tendencies or that. Oh, I not in be, rugby. I went. I did. I played rugby at school, so I, it's, that's more of a football <laughs> thing. Rugby Fuck. boys. Rugby oh. boys is different. <laughs> you played rugby. I can't. I, can't, can't I, was, I was hooker, thank you. Of course you are, babe. Of course. You and, are. and I anyway, um, carry on, James. Yeah, no, no, and I, and I, <laughs> well, I, I thought there'd be some, you know, like some, some, some potential stereotype, but I, you know, I've talked many times and 
why we wanted to have you on the show about you know for me sexuality isn't mm. yes there is black and white levels but actually it's you know it's a very grey area and there's lots of different avenues and things about it and I don't think anyone should be defined by their sexuality it plays no no relevance You're either a good person or a bad person yeah. you know it, it doesn't matter what uh, you know what floats your boat um, but I have to say that I, you know I always have done lots of things at Pride I've, I was you know very lucky to be on the front page of Attitude and Gay Times and stuff so and, and I and I whenever I need a pep up I just bowl down Old Compton Street and yeah. wi- <laughs> yes. women women wouldn't piss on me if I'm on fire but the lads on Old Compton Street why do you keep saying that like there are men and women alike are attracted to you babe friend. not on Old Compton Street I come out of there and I'm like yeah. bam <laughs> Honestly, I'm not. I've still got it, but, but I will because, say it's because the gays go like this. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. they have no shame but carving. I, I, I love for, it. I, for that period of time, feel like what it must be like every woman in the world for that one particular yeah. time where, like, men are so unsubtle, and men are unsubtle when they do it to women, but men on men unsubtle, being unsubtle, it's like that. But you like it though. I feel like you say it's like the ultimate. Oh, I love it. Gay men I love it. Yeah, I, I find I find it so it's so common. Oh yeah, well of course. I mean, like loads, of, like, I mean, loads, loads. So I've been talking to. Um, I've done a few interviews over um, over lockdown. I interviewed a few people that do only fans, and mm. um, so I, I interviewed Kieran Haler. You know, um, Katie Price's ex. I interviewed oh, yeah. him at some point. I mean, he's, he's not making as much money as some of the other ones, but um, he was saying yeah, how. I mean, what, uh, one guy, one guy interviewed in America was making a hundred thousand dollars a month. <gasps> what do they do on OnlyFans? They like just have a wank gets, in front of gets you. Gets his asshole out, has a wank, shoves dildos up his ass. Oh I did. Feel, I did feel a bit weird about interviewing him when I've, I'd seen objects go up his asshole. What, but, but you say this for hundred grand? A researcher enjoyment for hundred grand. What, 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 wait, so what do I have? What do they? Ha- what does someone have to do for that? <laughs> Just quickly, like what, what, what? We're talking, <laughs> but it's. I mean, he is. He's one of the. He's one of the biggest earners in the world. But then, so anyway. So my point is that Kieran Hayner did it, and he said that none of his fans are women, not one, and he's got thousands and thousands because I, because yeah. all you do, because basically, like, what gays like and why why gays like only fans specifically is because like you just get a blokey bloke who's walking around. They just want to see him take a piss, have a wank, all that kind of stuff. They don't, like, I mean, whereas girls would be like, ew, gross man. <laughs> I mean, you know, do you know what I mean? Girls don't, girls don't yeah. go, oh, I love a dirty guy who doesn't wash for weeks. Whereas, you know, whereas, you know, gays are just like, what? That bit know? I don't no, get. Totally. I mean, Actually, so... That ties in really nicely for something you wanted to ask Sam on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, I do wash ha- my bits. Ha- okay. yeah, how, yeah, how do I get to OnlyFans? No, that, that was another, another question. Um, what I wanted to know was... It, oh, actually, wait, sorry. Even though it ties in really well, there's something else which is going to tie into it. Even fine, better. fine. So can we start right. questioning you, Sam? Please, question away. Okay, so I read in one of your recent articles, I think it was in the Times, I'm not sure, that you have a new man. Oh, <laughs> no, I think I just told you. <laughs> no, I, you said your your new boyfriend is a frontline worker. Oh, no, I, oh, that was that was a piece. Oh, that was like a, oh, that was a bit of a Ms. piece. I don't think I ever sent you that. <laughs> You've done some sort of research. No, you did send it to me. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Uh, no, because I did a bit about, because um, I was staying with my dad and he's not been well and la da 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 and it was all really misery. But uh, yeah. yeah, during during lockdown, I didn't see him for two months because he's uh, he works... <laughs> He works with the mentally ill, and uh, I was with my dad, who was full on shielding because he's got cancer. So I, like, we went for a socially distanced walk. I said walk, um, <laughs> and um, he wore, and like we both wore masks and stuff. But it was, I mean, it was a bit. A bit... So you were one of those rare couples that actually didn't see each other for the yeah. entirety of the first lockdown. So how was that? How did you manage? I was like, I was like, look, I, I tell you what, I'll just come round. I'll wear like I'll wear a mask. I'll just pull down my pants. And he's got... <laughs> He's got he's got he's got quite a big willy, so I thought if I just put my bum against the letterbox, he can just you know. <laughs> Shout out to Sam's boyfriend! Congratulations! <laughs> well done, well done. Uh, but no, I mean no. Basically, that he was like, oh no, but if I if I don't if I can't kiss you, it's not the same. Oh, oh, don't be like that. That's mm. nice. I, no, I'm kidding. It is. I mean, it was nice. <laughs> Wait, I, even I was a bit like, oh, that's mate. He, I don't know where he's like. That's like. That's like something that a woman wants to hear. I really want to kiss you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I've 
had boyfriends that love kissing. Chloe, I'd knock you through the letterbox in five minutes if given half the chance. And the problem is my willy wouldn't get through the letterbox. I, it'd get caught on that furry bit of the thing. I'd be like, I'd be like Chloe, is it in yet? He'd be like, no. I'd be like, oh, the po- yeah. You'd you find- get one of those really thin doors with no insulation. To tell what I get, tell what I get those, I'd probably get a, 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 a DPD label stuck on the end of my knob because, because you know, they'd scrumple them up and stuff it in Just there. Scrumple yeah. them up. Yeah, they do scrumple. Um, okay, right, but so what about this lockdown? Is it the same? Um, he's doing. He's done two. Sorry, seven twelve-hour shifts in a row this week, and he's doing that next week. And so, I mean, it's, it's no good to me like that. And I know. Was, and it, I mean, so I speak to him on the phone, and he's moans. So um, <laughs> I mean, he, he's like, he's like, I've got nothing left in me. I've got nothing left in me. And I was like, well, well, you're no use you, to me, mate. You stay there, then. <laughs> so, wait, so, so, how did you meet? We met on a dating app. Well, I'm just going to say it was Grinder. Um, <laughs> it's not really a dating app. I don't. But it's the only one you lot have got, isn't it? Well, no, no, there's Tinder, Scruff, loads of different things. But what scruff? I was... What yeah. Scruff? Oh, you'll go down well on Scruff. Oh, there's a, there's a few on that are quite, um, quite dirty as well. When I read your article, I didn't know that when you delete someone, then you delete every, like, thread, every picture, every message you've ever sent them. Like, boo! And we'll, again, we can come on to this because we do actually have a topic for Sam after we've gossiped. We do. Death. But um, anyway, so, yes, yeah, so, like, um, the, the reason why I say that about Grindr is that I like up here, because I'm in Hertfordshire, it is... Um, you know, it's not like being in London. It's not Soho. So you jump. So if you want to meet like another gay person, you get a, you sort of meet at the pub or something. So it's more like a friends, like make friends locally. Like I've got lots of friends that I met on Grindr that wasn't a sex thing that I just to meet them locally because like I mean you don't go down the pub. We've got three pubs where I'm in Wellington Garden City. And you don't go down there and be like, who's got a who's a gay boy? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm wearing my sandwich one and ringing my bell anyway. <laughs> but like you know, it just doesn't it just doesn't happen. I mean, it's okay, right. So so you met on Grinder, and how long have you been together now? Uh, it'll be two years in January. I didn't know it had been two years. I oh, didn't wow. know either. Oh, yeah, then he <laughs> said, sent you an anniversary card, and you were like, uh-oh. Mm, oh, no, it's, it's, I mean, but the thing is, like, it's weird, because this year is like, it's been like six months of it was just, like, lost, wasn't it, really? This would be, do you remember that year we didn't Did see nothing. each other for months on end? <laughs> and I worked 12-hour shifts and never spoke yeah. to you. I couldn't, and all yeah. you wanted was a knob through a letterbox and I wanted a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, see? So, obviously, one of the things that Chloe was talking about uh, in your article, which was really interesting. And why we wanted to get you on here is we predominantly get messages from uh, single men, single women, couples. We obviously mm. have to- talked about lots of topics, but you know we can't really talk from a point of authority for, for gay men or transgender people or whatever it might be, and or lesbians in, in that fa- fact. But in this article, you talked about the fact that there was lots and lots of married, seemingly married and happily married uh, men, but who were mm. appearing on Grindr. Yes. Um, I mean, do you want to elaborate a little bit on that? Because I think our listeners will be intrigued and there are probably a lot of blokes going, <laughs> do what you're uh, fucking talking well, about, mate. Well, That's this, not well, me. It's not well, me. This was, this was the thing. I originally um, pitched it and to the, I think, to You magazine and they wanted me to do it. So um, I wrote it and everything. It was, it came, it came from a situation when I was actually, when I met David around then, I was, um, you know, meeting people. But I, there was a guy who was quite local to me and he, um, and he was on Grinder, and I said with a low voice. You whispered. Yeah. He was on Grinder. <laughs> he was on Grinder. <laughs> um, anyway, and I went around. Like he didn't. I didn't really know what he looked like or anything like that. But it's just the way he spoke. I, and I, I knew it wasn't like a sex thing. I wanted to meet him because I was just intrigued that he said he was married, and you know. And I went anyway. So I went around his house, and this is where the idea for the piece came from. Like, and he was so normal. Like anyone who you would meet down, you know. So I help I help my sister with her kids. I pick, you know, it's like he just looked like a dad, and he had pictures of like his two little girls like on the wall, um, and he was like just really sheepish. And he was like, "I've got two hours. My wife's taking the kids swimming," and I was like, "But he was just really sad, like, and and I didn't want to like it, I didn't want to like I didn't want to like do anything with him because it just felt a bit like he was just like oh, and sad. Like, we had a bit of a snog, and like, and he was just like oh, and I was like, <laughs> and I could just see like this misery, and I thought. Fuck me, that's awful. So then I was just like, oh, sorry, I, I, I can't do this. So I, I left. And then he messaged me on Grind again. That was great. Meet again. And I was like, so on Grind, it's like you have like loads of loads of um, people. It's the same as any old app. You get people's faces. You don't swipe. They're just in like a grid. And like, uh, so you have 
but there's lots of blank profiles. Um, but there's no picture. It's a picture of something random. And it says on it that they're either married or uh, they're straight or they've got a girlfriend. And then you get in contact with them. And so I was messaging all these people and there was so many of wow. them. Wow. Um, people who were like... I thought I'd uh, seen you off before somewhere. <laughs> I was trying, trying Catfish. To it was. It was so weird because I remember some bloke came around and gave me a terrible snog while Chloe was off, <laughs> Chloe was off swimming. I fucking knew, I knew it was you. <laughs> well, you should have been on grinder then, should you, freak? <laughs> but I, um, I got confused. I thought it was the thing for welders and like DIY. I was like, grinder. I was like, I fucking need one of them. I, I was thought it said there. minder. Oh, the best thing is I kept ordering, trying to order drills. People kept sending me dick pics. It's fucking <laughs> terrible. I said I wanted a drilling and yeah. they've, got, they've well, got the wrong end of the sticky I wanted, wick. I wanted some raw plugs and put up a <laughs> shelf. Like, you know, but don't, for those listening, don't go on Grind if you're looking for DIY stuff because you'll go horribly wrong. Well, I mean, some, so, I mean, there was, I mean, I know of some guy that got, like his wife caught him or something. And he was like, oh, I'm just on there to get compliments. What? Sound, for, <laughs> sound familiar? <laughs> Tell me that she didn't believe that. I don't know. I think, I, well, you know, this is the thing. That's such like, a guy thing the, to well, say. Well, some of the guys as well were like, oh, I think my wife knows. Um, I think if you've been married for a while, you'd rather just pretend it wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, especially if you had, I mean, they might have like a loving relationship. I mean, they, I mean, some of them were, were still having sex with their wives as well. And I was like, you do. Oh, wow. You do use, um, you know, protection. Protection. Because, like, God, can you imagine? Yeah. Sorry, well, dear, I've given you chlamydia. I think a lot of women who get cheated on find that to be the most disrespectful of all of it is if mm. if they find out because they get an STD and then it's like you disrespected oh not only did you disrespect me my emotional my mental health but you disrespected my fucking body because mm. you couldn't keep your dick in your pants and like that is like the ultimate slap in the face but so okay so I so yeah so I read this article and I too found it fascinating so I actually, one of my questions here is how did this come about and how prevalent is it? Both of which you've answered. But so, so it is, it is very much a prevalent thing that you and I suppose other men on Grindr have noticed that a lot of the men on there are married. 100%. I wouldn't say a lot, but I would say it was in the realm. A of substantial about, amount. I'd say it was in the realm of about 20%. Um, wow. And because, because the nature of, um, the app is that somebody you can be anonymous yeah. you can say i can't send a picture of you, i can't send a picture of myself or anything like that but will you meet me and like though them thirsty gays will always turn up <laughs> i mean yeah we all have our thirsty moments well. <laughs> yeah and they're like and, and obviously like it's a, so I remember, I remember somebody telling me once like um the difference between um, two gay men or like and a straight couple is like you know there's or with women in general it's like women there's there's always a woman in a relationship to say oh, no no I'm not into it tonight or something like that but with men it's just non-stop so therefore that's why you have that's why you have these dark rooms and you have like these massive sex clubs you don't have big lesbian clubs where they're like Mah, mash like in the corner like it's just because it's it's because there's you know it's because it's men and they've and there's nothing to stop them from going bonkers because this is this is exactly what so I, so I was one of the questions I wanted to ask you mm. so um because we get a lot of people and Chloe's very staunch against this and doesn't agree and she feels out the two of us she's got a higher sex drive um, no, no no what I will say just to preface I know what, where you're, what you're going to say but just to preface it really really quickly I don't agree that men have a higher sex drive than women what I do agree with is that men prefer promiscuous sex mm. on a, a, to a higher degree well, men, can, men can detach men can detach their emotions right. yeah, yeah. I, yeah. so I have a can't. yeah I have a much higher sex drive than you in 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 our marriage but I reckon if we were both single, you would probably be shagging way more than I would. Anyway, carry on. That's why I haven't got a high sex drive. I'm doing too much <laughs> Uh, I'm joking. Um, no, my point is that I wanted to ask you is that, you know, a lot of times we get people writing in and, and the stereotype is that men really want sex, women, mm. you know, don't want it, or women have the keys is it like as you just said, where two men just going, "Hello, mate, do you want to sex?" Like, yeah, that yes. simple. Whereas you, where you do that with uh, a man or woman, it very rarely happens. Like Chloe told a story last week about an ex boyfriend of hers who went out for a chip, went for a chip shop, and you know he asked for a bad sausage, and so did he, and he nipped, and so did she, and she nipped around the corner and delivered it. Um, but that's not quite rare. So is it is it like that with men? Just that crazy? Yes. Um, <clears throat> there are things that people would put on their um, grinder profile, things like fuck and go or dump and go or wow. or like or like I'll just be here um, with my pants down. Just come fuck my ass and 
come in it and then leave. I don't even want to talk to you, see your face or anything. Wow. <laughs> Close your mouth, James. James. <laughs> yeah, oh God, he's not shocked. James is like, if I was a gay man, this would be me. <laughs> no, I just, I'm just, because I'm very interested with that because it is when, when all the boundaries and all the sort of, sort of. When know, it's the, all the, stripped the... away and yeah. you don't, and like, and it's like, you know, like in a way it's just, if you're horny and that's what you wanted to do, uh, you don't have to. Go even go to the pub for a pint, like you under that charade. Just like you know, it's and then like, and then and then like, oh, I know we're just meeting because we're going to have sex later. That's what I mean. Don't that's even what, just get rid of all of that. But that's what men. That's what well, people and women are not trying to be sexist here. But there is a lot of like, if I was a man, and I was single. It's like, hi, how are you? Mm. Um, you know what's happening, and you have to I put a bit of chat in. And that's interesting enough with the dating app when Bumble came out. The whole idea of Bumble was to let women be in charge. Women they do the respond. choosing, don't they? But turns out that women didn't want to make the first move, a lot of a lot of feedback came back or, or wouldn't message first or wouldn't say anything. So They'd they get... want to be complimented and they want to be like, you know, yeah. woo, wooed, I suppose. Wooed, yeah. yeah, wooed, right? One of, our, one of my mates who's single was saying that, you know, like he he, he went on a date with to, for, to, for dinner and, you know, she, you know, she, she was like, oh, I don't think I can come back. And there's all this kind of pretense, like, oh, I shouldn't. And they get- Oh, was it just like, a charade? Yeah, and it's like, I'm not like that. It's and then play. before you know it, he's hanging out the back of her. <laughs> what, what, but that all that pretense, whereas you're basically saying that if I was single or Chloe was single mm. in, in an alternate um, universe, I would literally go, do you want to fuck? You're like, yep. Yeah. Or no, well, this is the thing. Like... There's a lot of cutting out the middleman, and um, I mean, there's obviously I'm not saying that like there's a, obviously a lot, and the majority of people would be like, um, I, I don't, I'm not just here for sex. I want, you know, I want to meet, to meet someone. someone. I want to go for dates, blah 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 blah. But especially, you know, if these married guys, they're not there for a relationship. They're there because they have this need that they need to get rid of. Basically, yeah. they, don't, they don't even want. They don't want it. They don't want it. Like if they could erase that part of them, they would. Because I mean, they've tried so hard for how many, however many years to do so to begin with. So yeah. they just need to, like, basically, one guy told me that it just sort of builds up in him, builds up in him, like, and he forgets about it. He gets it, and then it gets too much. After a couple of months, he downloads Grinder again, gets on it, gets his rocks off, deletes it again, and he forgets about it for another two months. And I think that's a very universal truth for anybody. And I'm obviously, I am not saying that being gay is a fetish. I obviously, <laughs> that's sexuality. Those dirty gays. <laughs> Those dirty fetish men. Um, Festering. <laughs> ultimately, your sexual kind of desire ultimately is going to get the better of you. And it's actually more about learning how to manage that in your day-to-day -day life and kind of have a balance. So one of the I've... things I really wanted to ask you is why do you think that there are so many adult gay men who are not only still in the closet, but also married and or with kids? Well, I mean, the thing is, I think there's an there was an age group of the people that I spoke to um, like I think there was a guy in his sixties. I think one guy maybe like in like early seventies, and um, and the rest of them were like you know forties wow. and fifties. And um, because I think obviously nowadays, I think okay, basically like I'm I'm forty, and when I was, um, it was it wasn't amazing when I was like eighteen, nineteen, and I you know and I felt the pressure of like oh I should try and have a girlfriend, blah 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 blah. But I think nowadays they a lot of the time they don't even feel that pressure. So that's a lot of that is taken off. So especially it's one thing I did work because it's, it's basically was quite, it was quite a long piece that I wrote. The um, It ended up in the Times because um, the the head honchos at the Mail on Sunday were like, oh, it's too much. <laughs> of course I, they were. And, 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 also, and, also and also the title of the piece was, Is Your, hu is Your Husband on Grinder?" And I wanted, um, and I wanted like, people to be sat there reading their Mail on Sunday, like in bed, like just going... I love but do you that. reckon? Do you reckon there would have been like because you know women like pick stuff up all the time and like you would t they, they you think they're not listening like Chloe's like Sherlock Holmes. I reckon it, <laughs> she would have been like that in bed like reading it and she would have been like that. Giving that <laughs> fucking side. Why, why are you why are you reading that? You know that me you know that meme with that dog that's just like. Side eye, you know, yeah, it's side eye. <laughs> Chloe, like the whole time, like doing weird things, like buying me a magazine of someone in swimming trunks. Do you like? Do you like that thing? I'm like, what do you mean? Or so like should I tell you how? So for you, for me, in my head, this is how I perceive you and your sexuality. If someone were to say to me, you or someone else, oh, James once tried to be gay for a month, I would believe it a hundred percent. Yes. But if someone turned to me and was like, James is like fully, fully gay, I'd be like, no, he's not. He's just not. But I reckon. But I mean, he is going to be sticking things up his ass for a hundred grand a month. <laughs> 
on OnlyFans very soon. I mean, you are fruity. <laughs> yeah, I am fruity, Chloe. I, I'm, I'm up 100 grand fruitier at, at, this, <laughs> at this rate. Um, well, this is, the, this is the thing. They're not, I mean, like a lot of these people on, I mean, we're digressing again, but like um, yeah. a lot of people on these OnlyFans, um, they're, they're completely straight, happy with their sexuality, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But like, they'll, you know, they'll just wank off and they'll shove something up. And like the more, right. the more you engage, if you shove something up your ass, you're, it's still a, that's that doesn't make you gay. Like, so like, like, why not? Oh god, that's yeah. what Wait, we talked so about on. last episode. We're saying you know, but there are, but a lot of simple-minded people. And we'll come on to this once you've answered Chloe's question. But there mm. are a lot of simple-minded people who are like, oh, put something up your ass, you're gay. It's just Fact. completely, completely Fact. gay, mate. Gay, mate. That's it, yeah. Gay, mate. Gay, mate. They obviously haven't, they obviously haven't tried it. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that the truth? And I'll tell you now, every man that has tried it, gay or straight, yeah. likes it. So what what have you said about So you said you, it was in the Sunday Times and what, and they ended oh, up... Oh, right, yeah. So, oh, the oh, no, so, the, no, so the Mail on Sunday, I think they they got the willies about it, and it was, <laughs> ironically. Uh, <laughs> and, um, and they thought, I think they thought it might, was a bit much for their audience. So um, it only... And it, uh, so I... I pitched it to the Times and it came and then obviously the whole thing was Philip, when Philip Schofield came out, they were like, oh my God, I, it's completely relevant now to do it now. So, um, so as I was saying before, like it's, I think it's definitely an age thing, but also it's for um, guys that um, feel like, especially there was, you know, some religious guys on there who couldn't come out because they were Muslim or because they were Hindu and their families wouldn't approve. So um, one guy, he's like, he had three kids, lived in the local area. He, um, he loved his wife. A lot of them said that they loved their wives, and just Aww. it was. Just, I know it was just sort of like a thing, and like, Sweet. and it, it's just it's. But it's just it's sad, you know, really, really it sad. Is. Do Do you think any of it? I know you said Chloe said that being gay isn't obviously isn't a fetish, which is right. But do you think any of it was just thrill seeking? Like you know, there's a point where you've done everything, and you're like, I want to try something a bit risque, and it, it, because it just because you don't so. want to marry expect- a man or date a man. I don't think. I think. Well, I do think obviously sexuality is, you know, grey. Yeah. Yes. It's no one's fully one way or the other. Um, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, like maybe, you know, a guy gets a bit pissed and he's like, oh, do you know what? I've, I have thought about it sometimes. I'd let a guy suck me off or something. Do you know what I mean? And then do it and then be like, hmm, wasn't really into it. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, I've, I've snogged girls and, you know, Fiddled around with their boobies, and um, I'm sure I've wait, been one wait, of them. Say, say, <laughs> that is the most Seven. amateur description of anything. No, you're definitely a gay boobies. man. It's like I fiddled with some boobies. I would just, say I no. think I've, I've probably made out with pre- almost not all, but almost all of my gay friends. Mm. Like, what, what? So that is, that's different that's more like snogging your friends i mean like yeah. I, I had a girlfriend and i properly and i knew she was super into me and you know and i and i think but it was like i got some i got some fingers in the tail one night and then that was enough that was enough for me right was, that was too much you, you have tried it but it wasn't I was like, <laughs> vagina dentata no i'm joking um i just i just because my brother my, bro- my brother's gay and he what? was like i said to him you know but he, did you I, sleep with a girl yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. A, few, a few girls, I think. But I think it wasn't for him. He, he basically said that if you're going to design something that was horrific, a vagina is what you would design. If it was like <laughs> something terrible. I was like... Hell, yeah. hell mouth. Yeah, like, hell mouth. I, yeah. I understand what you mean. Too. Oh, wait, wait, I think I knew your brother. A warm pot. I think, I think Chloe was going to try and set me up with him once. I was yeah. in time. the beginning. When we first saw so oh, yeah, five did, years, yeah. five, six years ago, I was going to try and set you guys up. And why didn't I? If he's, if he's still available, like, you know, I, I haven't seen the boyfriend for months. <laughs> he started... He's got um, quite a big knob. We'll put it through the letterbox. He started... <laughs> put it through um, my letterbox. How, does he have a big knob? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I, big. Don't, I don't know. Um, but he, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, I know why. Because he met that guy. Do you remember? Oh, yeah, he from, did, yeah. Where was it? Denmark it was, or something? Yeah, I don't know where it was from, yeah. They're having it was, a, it, was, it was a long time ago. Yeah, but <laughs> it I, was I, a I, mink. But, it's, but, I, <laughs> but I do think... <laughs> but, <laughs> oh... No, I mean, there's obviously fannies. Fannies are beautiful. It's just when they're, you know, displayed. Well, that, well that's what. Yeah, but, yeah, but, they're beautiful yeah. when they're hidden. It, it's, they just, it's just, a, it's just a bit like, you know, predator. No, but that's what. No, but the thing with it is, is you gay men say that though. Is that is that I look at a fanny, I think, oh, that's that's lovely. That's the best. I want to stick seen. it in it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then not you look every at, fan, not every surely. fan, obviously not every fan, but then you look at a willy and you're like, well, you know. And oh, they're both, being, they all look gross. They all look gross. But what I mean is, it's just interesting to be wired to the point where you'll look at a willy and go, God. I want a little bit of that, and then uh, and you look at Fanny like, oh, that's hell mouth. Well, that that's was the like thing. the way the way I think it's always in the back of your mind. Do you know what I mean? It's like if you're if you're you know in the closet, whatever. Like that's must be 
you know who you are because of what you think about when you have a wank. Do you know what I mean? Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a very grey area. I am a straight girl, but I can say, hand on heart, I've seen photos or, you know, porn with penises and been like, ugh, rank. Same, same. I've seen photos or porn of penises and been like, oh, I like that. I like the look of that one. And same Depends goes. On the penis. For, yeah, and so, but same goes for vaginas. I've seen, you know, vaginas and been like, oh, no, that doesn't do anything for me. That's awful. T- take it away. Take it away now. And you've and seen then someone think, I want a munch. I've seen what I've seen. I've seen one recently, actually, on a on a porn clip that I watched. Not I'm not I'm not saying that it was a porn clip I was shown. <laughs> FYI, but I do like whatever. It's fine. Right, yeah. Anyway, and I was like, wow, her vagina's a amazing yeah. like yeah. sorry but yeah you, but did you, you think it was think beautiful both. as in beautiful type but did you want to like uh, you know not... no i i didn't want to get that's into it well that's I the difference want... you can appreciate thought... how beautiful it is if you don't Fine. Get we one thought of, you know... by having it a gay person on here that we might like upgrade our uses of language and oh. terminology and that we were going to like get ourselves out of the dark ages I have the wrong munch, person fiddle with <laughs> boobies a nice fanny hanging out the back of a letterbox i'm <laughs> i'm the only sensible one on this evening's podcast i mean i i, I highly doubt that um okay got what well, no, cause i was, so I was asking about that so you so you think it you know you said while they might be trying something you know because for example uh chloe always tells me that you know the big some of the biggest uh, you or you porn things that have been sort of uh, googled are bi- uh, fat women, uh, transgender porn. Transgender is the number and, uh, one um, what, uh, a straight man uh, por- watched porn. Yeah. So, tra- really? so yeah. yeah. So, so the interest, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm interested with it is, is whether these guys are genuinely gay and, 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 and aren't able to come out, like you said, for religion and everything else like that, or it's, you know, it, it, they fetishize it so much that they want to do it. And as soon as they come, they're like, Actually, this isn't for me. Delete it, get away from it, and then go again. Because that yeah, sounds quite, like quite, a fetish. Well, that quite, yeah, well, quite possibly. And it's sort of like, um, you know, when you see like one of the oven rings is red, and you're like, don't touch it. But you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who does so that? They're sort of like, no, no, I don't know. Crazy people. Well, I've actually got a burn on my arm. It wasn't from that, <laughs> it was from cooking sausages. And that's not a euphemism. Um, ironic. So, uh, yeah, so I think. Yeah, maybe. But the thing is, because obviously sexuality is such a grey area, sometimes yeah. people think, oh, you know, I'm I'm just going to give it a try and then decide they decide they don't like it. And then because it's so fluid now, you know, you're allowed to. This is why I think um, what we're saying before about it's an age thing. Like, obviously, you get there's a whole broad spectrum now with young people, whatever, when, um, you know, you can be non-binary, etc. You can decide who you are and who you want to sleep with. So you can, you know, you can like, you know, it's, there's, there's there's no holds barred, no holds barred. Mm. Um, but um, it's just it's just you can they can be who they want to be, so they therefore they don't necessarily feel like they have to fit into a pigeonhole. So um, just yeah. anything, goes, anything goes nowadays. So I just think it's much better for everybody's mental health to feel like they are not trapped. Uh, did you come up with any conclusions from the piece in terms of? Uh, you know how to maybe perhaps liberate these men was there we were, were you did people reach out to you and say oh my god I'm struggling anonymously what was the response to it um oh a couple of people messaged me on Facebook and were like oh thank you for writing that I'm in the same position but it's um it's a case of sometimes it's it's too far like it's your this well this was a thing with with Phil I mean we don't know you know whether he came out on his own or whether he was pushed but it was it, it was all to do with um just like timing and and do you really want to throw your life into disarray i mean if you're if you're in your 60s and you're, you're like one of this couple, one guy that i spoke to his kids had left home and you know and he, and he had grandkids and stuff so it was like what is the point in rocking the boat now i mean he's not he wasn't miserable he was he was okay it's just it just i think the difference is if you are like that and you feel like you wish you had a relationship with a man and you know because a lot of these people wouldn't even consider having like a like a loving relationship with a man it's just like sex and then get rid okay so i wanted to my last question with you on is your husband on grinder i renamed it back to the original because <laughs> <name, 'cause> i <laughs> thank I, you I much, I much preferred the original title <laughs> um <clears throat> Are there any warning signs um, for either uh, gay men to look out for that someone that they're shagging or dating is actually married or married women to look out for that their husband might in fact be gay? Mm. I think it's you're more likely 
um, if you were if you were like shagging a guy, you're more likely to know that he was married, and it's up to you whether you want to carry on with that. You know, because you could have like a regular person, oh, they're married, and they they their wife doesn't know, and then it gets all very confusing. Yeah. But I think um, so. That's so. The, I think the gay person in, in that situation would be the one in the know. Then you've got the straight guy who's like, and it, and unfortunately, it feels like the wife or the woman in the situation is it's is the loser. last to know. Yeah. And, the, and I wouldn't say she was a loser. I would say you know. Um, it it just it depends because as I said sometimes I think they would have an inkling and they just didn't want to know. Um, yes. But I think a lot of the time they definitely would want to know. And also, I know I think my sister said this. She would rather her husband cheated on her with a man than with another woman. I because, can understand that fully. Well, because because yeah. you could because you can never be a man, so you can't. Well, so you're good enough as you're the perfect woman, you're the perfect wife, but you're not a man. So I 100% agree on two of those points. So I would say half of my female friends have told me, and this is not me, as I'm sure both of you know, <laughs> have told me that if their if their husband was cheating on them, you know, fill in the blank where you want, but um, yeah. they don't want to know. They do not want to know. They they're happy. They're cool. I am the exact opposite. If, if, <laughs> I know. If my I partner, yeah, yeah, exactly. If my partner is cheating on me, I want to fucking know about it. I want to have a conversation. I want to figure it out, right? I I'd, get some, I'd get some garden shit Oi, and, say, even, and say, let's do the letterbox thing. Hi, I mean, even when she says uh-huh. it, even when she says it, it's not like I'd like to have conversations. I want to have a conversation. Uh-huh. We're going to have a chat. It's yeah. already scary. No, but, but, and you're but dead. Then, <laughs> but then I would say once you... So that's where I stand. However, I will caveat it with this. Once I know, there is no 100% you know, uh, uh, set in stone answer that I would go with. There's no, uh, that that I can think of situations where if you cheated on me, I would probably leave. But even Mm. then I can't say definitely. Mm. And I can think of situations where if you cheated on me, I might not leave. And I, and and I think it's completely a woman's prerogative as as to how she, how she handles it. But um, I do, you know, obviously I agree with you. I think it's so sad because ultimately it's a life that lacks authenticity. And I don't know how much authentic joy you can get in a life that doesn't have authenticity as its foundation. Mm. Does that make sense? No, I agree with you. I mean, if that, especially if it's, um, because I think one of these guys I spoke to, he had, he'd only gotten married like a, a year or two before. And I was like, didn't you feel like it was the wrong thing to do? Or like, and he was like, no, I loved her. I want to have kids, that sort of thing. And, um, but they're sort of setting themselves up for that. I think, obviously, it's. Com- I, I can't even bear to think of half these people's mental health issues. But like, oh. um, I think um, you know, as it's very, you have to compartmentalize like your life and your sexuality and all of that. So it'd be a nightmare. But I think um, there could be a way, depending on if she loved him and she was happy with the situation, that she would allow him once a month or something and I, I'm, she could yeah. potentially find a sexual partner herself i mean I'm well, she might not she might not are. want to she might not want she might just say like i tell you what i know i love i love you you're a great dad to our kids like <laughs> you're okay you're a great dad to our kids you you go and you go I mean, and have sex that, with a man once a month and then that's if, it if that was us and you decided you were gay and i decided to stay with you because we're married and we had kids i would 100 percent go looking for d on a friday night like, <laughs> but you've got babe. that's the point you've got your d you don't need any more d <laughs> don't be such a greedy d you can, have, well, you can have my d we can't have a smidge more it's already 10 um, no but i also i really agree with your sister on that as well i think like if you can't if you know you can't compete mm. then i think you either have to accept like i don't think it would be quite so painful definitely because your pride wouldn't be hurt but then i think it might be be more painful in that you would know now that this wasn't a one-time thing mm. this was your husband would never be satis- satisfied yeah, exactly and that you're, you're never going to be wants. the only one and if he says you're the only one then he's either lying or he's repressing a part of himself that will ultimately make him miserable do, yeah. do you think that in 2020 you know we say we've made a lot of progress with accepting people or uh, mm. Do, you know, do you feel normal society is is is, is accepting of gay, lesbians, and transgender people? Do you, do you do you genuinely feel that that some of these people who are concerned about coming out it's misplaced, or or, or do you think a lot of it's there's still a lot of work to be done? Um, oh, absolutely, there's loads of work to be done. I mean, like, you only, if you just get shitty comments from people on Twitter, etc., then you know there's work to be done. There's, as as soon as there's no comments, that which. I mean, God knows that would ever happen. I think at the moment it's um, the target is the trans community, and mm. I think it's I think it's almost the last taboo that you're allowed to be just blatantly transphobic and people like 
I mean, did you look at the whole furore with J.K. Rowling? I mean, like, yes. it's, it's such murky waters. Um, but at the same time, it's like they have human rights too. And I yes. think that I think I think that I think the gay people, like gay, gay and lesbians, have you know have have a, a, a much obviously a much better time of it. And it obviously depends on what country you're in, etc. And like, um, but I think with trans people, I think they get a lot of shit that they do not deserve. I think there's a lot of newspapers out there that still peddle this fear um that i think uh, is completely unfair we we've mentioned one of them in this podcast the what at one at one paper will be invaded by gay transgender <laughs> immigrants that's the next one of the battle you know um on that issue though just interesting because i don't want to go too much into it because because it's it's not for this podcast but mm-hmm. obviously i think sometimes sexuality and gender get confused yes do you find because obviously a lot of the good work that's been done because th- this stuff is it's sometimes confusing it. Do you think that's an issue? Um, I think, obviously, no, I, I think the two things are separate. I agree with you. Like, how you identify as a gender, what that's that's got nothing to do with who, who you fancy. But you, you, how you identify gender-wise, that's yours. That's that's what that's what belongs to you. And I, and again, neither of those things are anyone's fucking business. <laughs> Right, I fucking love that. I, I was going to say, what do you? A lot of times, I've met gay men, uh, not in car parks and, and when Chloe's out. But, um, <laughs> and, and, and it, dump and go, was it? Dump and go. <laughs> that um, would be Chloe if he thought, was gay. That would be. Chloe I thought, thought it was wash and go. <laughs> Chloe thought the local tip was called dump and go because that's where I was going <laughs> six days a week. Um, I was having to dismantle part of the house just to get these shoes. Um, no, what I was going to what I was going to ask was, is a lot of gay men talk about. Oh, they only go for single men. Sorry, they go for sorry, they go for straight men. Yeah, I do, and I think, men. and I know a lot of people that do do that. And in my mind, I think is there is something. Um, it's like it's always going to be a self fulfilling prophecy, and a lot of yeah. people, and a lot of people develop feelings for these straight men, and it's like he's never going, he's never going to be into you, or it's yeah. never going to work out. I'd be like, it's like. It's like a girl going out with a bad boy. I always go out with a bad boy because I can change him. Do you know what I mean? Or Hi. Like... <laughs> Hi, I'm I did, And I did. <laughs> but like, you're never going to change. And I, I, I think it's also, there's a, <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a sort of self-flagellation about it as well. It's a bit like, you know, yeah. you know, you know you're going into it and you know you're going to get hurt. So, so what do you, I think, you, I think it, it shows kind of a low opinion of yourself. That's I agree. I mean. And I also think it shows somebody, so I know somebody, mm. but she she's gay and she will only go for straight women, only. And I think it might be because she fucking loves a challenge, mm. loves a challenge. And I think there's something wrapped up in that, but it is a dangerous game to play because unrequited love is a horrific thing yes, to have to go is. through. It is. I mean... Okay, like going back to what I was saying before, about why people end up getting married like um as i said i was i was early 40s um but i have never (laughs) really been i've never i've never really been able to hide that i'm gay do you know what i mean because i I don't believe you sam what do you mean how do you how do you say you can't how do you say you is it because you (laughs) you ran up and go well no listen when i get a girl home i just like to play fiddle with the boobs (laughs) and i go she's got a face like a predator a muff like a predator but that might that potentially might be what's giving it away but i wouldn't i wouldn't have said that when i was younger oh right apparently apparently when i was a little boy like my sister there's a video of me and my sister falls off the wall and i go how peculiar (laughs) <laughs> I, like, actually, I like three. Yeah, yeah. I James imagine. doesn't know you that well, but actually, I will say I have seen Sam in like social situations or like just just being with him. Like genuinely, you would have no idea that he's gay, and then he can swing like a pendulum, and then before <laughs> you know it, he is the only gay in the village. When, when, you, when you were six, you were uh, embroidering silk ruffs onto jackets. And the well, thing is, like, I could be quite blokey. I love playing video games. I like sports stuff and things, just things like that. But like, I, I think. So my point was that I think if because I, you know, people would say you're gay at school, there was mm. never really any escape for me. But with a lot of guys, um, maybe your brother, I don't know, but like they're quite if they're quite blokey, they know they're gay in their head, but they don't have to address it because nobody says anything to them, and therefore, like it, it, it can just it stays repressed and. No one has ever said anything to them ever because they're, they're, you know, like quite a butch gay. So they don't have to, um, they they feel like they don't have to come out and they'll just go and have, you know, their life, etc. So I think with your friend who just goes for straight girls, maybe she likes, you know, like totally femme girls who don't look anything like they're gay, etc, etc, etc. Oh, yeah, that's 100% her, to a T. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it did, absolutely is. Did you feel like you had to, did you, did you have to come out? Or were your parents like, we know, or, or you know. <laughs> Get out or we'll throw you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sam's family are not like that. No, they're not. I was, um, well, I, I was bisexual for a little bit. Bi now, gay later. Um, <laughs> We've and, all uh, had a bisexual period. Yeah, Straight exactly. Gay. <laughs> it was Have a we? period. It was a period that was the problem. Um, it was just. I think <laughs> after after a while, I just I said said to my mum, look, there's, there isn't going to be any more girls, and she was like, oh, I know. She said, she said, we knew since you were young. And I was like, well, you might have told me. Is that because you, is that because you were walking around with DM, driving one of them red little Diamante buggies that you'd, you'd sing, put sequins on? And de- no, no, <laughs> Sam is not a Diamante kind of guy, okay? I'm not, that, I'm get... not that kind of gay, for God's sake. No, All can right. we give him a bit more credit? Okay, okay. Well, okay. I like Diamantes. Well, also, they, scared, also but... uh, one thing that you will find with gays as well is that they... Um, they're quite anti-camp people, and um, especially if they're quite camp themselves, they're like, "See that guy? He's so fucking camp! It's rank!" <laughs> and you're like, "Okay." Yeah. <laughs> and the, thing, and the thing is, like, there's nothing wrong with being camp. There's nothing no, wrong with being. But I think, like, I think, no. Like, and actually, when you, when you, when you, if if you meet or come into contact with a young boy, mm. very much a boy, not an adolescent, mm. certainly not an adult, who of, might not know yet that he's gay. Mm. Um, camp is quite often the case and actually it's not there's nothing wrong with it because it's not i don't personally think it's anything that you can necessarily control and if you do it's not without a huge effort so i don't like it when gay men say that either and i hear that all the time like oh i can't stand people who are camp i'm like you don't really get to choose what your what your kind of and look at the friggin' mirror dearie yeah all the time if i spend if i spend a night out with like a load of gay men by the end of it i just i get so i get so handsy i love it close it looking at the end it's quite, um, I love it. It, rubs, I, it does rub off on you quite a lot. Yeah. You did have one bad experience in Soho once, though. Do you remember? Somebody propositioned you or, like, kind of, kind of semi, no pun intended, assaulted you. Oh, and you yeah, were like, oh, yeah. my God, this is, that was horrific. Like, now I know how women feel. Yeah, yeah, no, because I was on that, on that, on that pride thing, what we, we talked about at the top of the show. I was getting groped all the time, like, grabbed my will in my ass and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, look. You know, uh, I don't mind. It's quite funny. I was, but after like the ninth or tenth funny time, to begin with. but yeah. also, but there was two things. Some of the state of the men that were coming on to me, I was like, "Fuck me!" Even if I was gay, I ain't banging you. You're horrible, uh-huh. right? So for, I was disappointed in that. So my ego was dented. Um, no, but there was one guy that I was standing in the queue trying to go to the toilet, and he cra- grabbed my ass. And I kept turning around and said, "Listen," I, and the problem is because I'm quite big. I, and I don't, I don't want to be. I, I don't. Sexuality is not. I don't care about it. But, but. There's boundaries, and I was like, I didn't want to. You don't want to be like, no, because well, that's what I mean. It's aggressive. I didn't want to reprimand him, but on by the by like, fifth time, I was like, please, I'm not gay, and he was like, like going like, kiwi, and I was like, mate, please, <laughs> could you not? And like, I tried to go into the toilet. He tried to push me into the toilet with him. I was like, I don't. And all what I had to do is say, listen, this is not for me, and I had to just leave. And I just want to say for anybody listening to this, that is not a normal thing that happens. Like, no, no, so- no. But, but the thing but, is, I, I've, I've been at a party and somebody did that with me, and he kept and he kept doing it, and he kept doing it, and I and I was just like, honestly, you do it one more time, I'm going to punch you in the face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he and he did it, and I punched him in the face. But, but the thing is, for for me, I'm sure it didn't really hurt that much. But <laughs> but I didn't, I don't, I didn't find, um, but I just didn't feel like I was empowered to be able to do anything without just being because I didn't. Plus, you have a profile, so you don't. You like, you know, James Haskell yeah. hits game at game. That's what I mean. I just didn't. I, I didn't, think homo game, bash. Yeah, homo <laughs> bash. The game community know that they have a supporter in you yeah, no one exactly. been of course what what i uh, you know we're coming to, towards the end there but i really cut the questions i wanted to ask you was so you've talked about the, the you know the fact that um you can have sex whenever you want essentially being a gay man that um you know it's very open sort of the middleman's been taken away does that make uh having a gay relationship more difficult uh, and do you find it being faithful more challenging than say single people do you know, my my my, um, my sister's asked that before. It's like, and my dad's asked that before. It's like, it, it's no different to straight people. If you're both, if you both want to be in something. Um, I mean, the thing is, like, I have some friends who have open relationships, and but obviously, this has Shame. to be, this has to be like, and, and again, you can have, obviously you can have a male to female open relationship. That's yeah. that's fine. And so I think it's it's just human nature. It's just it's just down to the people. I mean that. 
that sort of thing wouldn't be for me at all. I would fucking hate it. So, yeah, <laughs> that, and that, that's completely right. That's a very individual thing. I've got loads of gay and straight friends that are both in open mm. relationships and monogamous mm. relationship. It's got nothing to do with your sexuality mm. and it's actually got everything to do with your personal preference of a relationship. The only difference, what you were saying, is that you can have sex whenever you want. Yes, of, uh, yeah, you, uh, it is easier because you've had, you've got the whole no female saying no thing. Um, that, is, that is the only difference. It's like, and the whole like, because I don't, you know, women wouldn't, Women wouldn't do dump and go. I mean, I've seen a few dogging videos sometimes. Maybe some of them would be, but oh, terrible ladies. No, not for me at all. And I'm really like pro sex, but no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a shocker the other day. I put, I was um, I had to stop to eat, uh, eating some food and I pulled into one of those lay bys and I actually oh, no. turned on the lights and everything. Someone came wanking through the window. And I was no, trying to, he's I was, joking. I was, trying, I, was trying to, I was trying to eat a Big Mac. I, I, honestly, you're joking. Yeah, of course I'm joking. Oh, for so. fuck's sake. Or am I? I <laughs> remember wanking to... in my window. You, you know who you are. You made that really convincing story. Um, one up, one last question to kind of finish on. You said at the top of the the, the show about um, some of the weird sort of things that that. Uh, the gay men are into is it anything that you just think you can't understand because I, I the bit about not washing you know i spoke to my brother about this and he's not into this but the whole kind of you know body odor thing and the not washing oh, yeah. thing i don't mind body odor on a man if i fancy them it's not not a turn on <laughs> there are some there are some things that i i do not understand like it's... um there's there's like a little there's there's like a little metal thing that Guys stick down their down their um urethra. Mm. Sound, sounding, it's called. So yes, yeah, that. No, I don't understand that. Um, mm. Fisting, not really. I don't really get that. I I would I would like to be able to go for a shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not not just not just have to wear a nappy. Um, yeah. And, and just and just and things to do like anything like electric like zzz, zzz, I don't yeah. get that either. I mean just just things that go a bit too dark because like, I mean there's blood play and stuff that people oh, do right. right yeah but that's not just I, uh, can i also just say this is not all just oh no that's that's just not that's that's a, that's that's you know, that's across that's across the board i mean yeah i've heard some stories from really tame sex parties like torture garden right which is considered to be yeah my friend of mine when my friend of mine runs it right okay so it's considered to be a tamer sex party in the grand scheme mm. of things and i've had some friends go and tell me things and i'm like that's not tame like that's way mm. like way across the line that 99.9 percent .9 of people are behind yeah, and yeah, yeah but that like a lot of people have some weird shit going on <laughs> <laughs> they do and the thing is it is it is it is personal preference and the, the mm. problem is it's like you were saying james like um like I think this is often the case with maybe like, you know, rock superstars, for example, who can have anything on a plate and they end up like, um, you know, pushing themselves, pushing themselves, pushing themselves. Yeah. Like nothing thrills them anymore yeah, until yeah. they go full on The next dark. high, yeah. Yeah, until they go really dark shit and then, well. That's what I mean, but it's like, it's, like, it's like, you know, you've shagged everything one way, so you're like, I'm going to do it this way and you're like, it's still yeah. not filling it. And then, and then yeah. you know, I think also porn's got a lot to do with it because whereas yes. you can imagine stuff, Oh, 100%, yeah. You know, you can imagine stuff in your head is mm. that once you've watched, because you know, that, for example, the, the, the stuff that I would watch now in comparison to what when I was watching, I was 15, we just see a pair of poobs and your willy goes off like a rocket. Yeah. Now, unless it's some real professional stuff going on... Well, this, really well, well, this is the thing. Like, um, So I said in my in my book, um, The Insider, so it's it's basically it's yes. tips it's tips for um, straight women from a gay guy. And like, um, because they've told me all their secrets, etc., and all their horrific stories. And one of the stories in there was, it was about it was I talk about porn in one of the chapters. And um, some a friend of mine's brother, he couldn't keep a girlfriend, and they didn't understand why. And basically, because he had grown up on porn, and he thought yeah. that women liked to get a big bursts of cum in their face uh, after sex, so he would do it every time, every and time. Like, and they'd be like, oh, I fucking don't want that. And then, yeah, uh, and that would be the end of that. Every so, like, so, like, you know, they have, each time he slept with a woman, they the women ha would have a terrible sexual experience because yeah. he thought, because he thought he was learning from pornography. So, I mean, well, uh, I will say, <laughs> I will speak to this. I am a generation of woman who uh, a, a has a generation of man alongside them that've grown up watching porn. Mm. And what I will say is, I'm very lucky in that I am very sexual and very open to a lot of things. But that isn't necessarily the case for everybody. Right. And even I have had experiences where I've been like, how did you think I would enjoy that? How yeah. would you think that that would be a, ple a pleasant experience for me? <laughs> yeah. And there is nothing, it's 
second. You shit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you shit on my head. What the fuck are you doing? No. Why? <laughs> Why did this happen, God? Um, but the second that you... I told you not to tell him about you, that. Uh, fucking hell. The second that you... Um, that a woman doesn't feel physically safe or comfortable mm. with you. And it's not necessarily your fault. Like I say, if you've grown up on porn and you've misread yeah, exactly. the situation. But the second that that goes, that's gone. Mm. And um, yeah, so I, I, it is really scary and really depressing. And and, I, and again, like I say, I'm clearly very, we're clearly very open about sex. We clearly talk about it very freely. Mm. But, but at the same time, uh, even I find it quite scary and depressing mm. how fucked up, uh, especially young men, uh, their sexual kind of appetite have become because they've watched some oh, fucking oh God. and then of course that's crazy that's before porn. you even factor in instagram uh yeah feel it all like your, you know your love island bodies for example um, yeah you're just like i mean Those i would i would never want to like exactly i would never i would like i feel for my nieces they're like 9 11 i just think oh my god never go on social media ever but like you know it's like the combination of social media and porn is just like i mean you're not going to find anyone like that you don't look like that people don't want that they sexually. don't look they like don't, that. they don't they, look, they don't they stop trying to look for someone that does yeah. look like that because you'll never find them i, mean, I know so head, but... many people so many people who've done love island and they fucking starve themselves get personal trainers go crazy a few months before mm. filming they don't really eat when they're in there they like sip their drink and then that's pretty much it um they don't look like that six months after the show mm. so it's and and it's the same with instagram you know like men and women um kind of promoting these body types that mm. aren't what they look like in real life exactly. and then having 12 15 18 year old young men being like well that's what women have to look like and same with porn that's how women have to fuck no yeah, exactly it's they're not like real dirt, life all like dirty bitches each time and like, oh no yeah absolutely not <laughs> is that I, don't what that, thing? I don't know no. what that was put it in my uh, 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 that was, a, that was like sort of cruella de vil like, um, so, so you, so you, Sam, your book's out at the moment. Where can people get it? I just get it online on Amazon, The Insider, by me, Sam Dowler. But I also um, do a weekly radio show on Vibe FM and uh, a weekly podcast called United Queendom. And then um, next, on the 10th of November, I'm on some sort of celebrity show as well. And that's every week on ITVB. Ooh. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. And just for anybody who listens to this this podcast who's got any concerns about sexuality and everything else like that. Email Sam. Email, you know, <laughs> reach out. Reach I would out. love to be your gay agony uncle if you need any help in the future. I think you should come back like once every to. once every five or six episodes. Yeah, we'll get we'll get we'll get, we'll get someone to um we'll get to send any questions into CQ questions at jameshaskell.org <laughs> and we'll get Sam to Absolutely to come, to come back on for a quick fire um question answer and oh. see what he see what he thinks. And again quick fire and go. Yeah, dump and go. Um, all I'll say, all I'll say is as well is that I, I, you know, for my view on sexuality and why it's so important for me, uh, we don't have prejudice against um, you know, gay and straight people, trans or anyone is because imagine trying to live your life being someone you're not the whole time. And yeah. what Sam's talked about with those married men who, for religion or whatever reason, aren't able to be themselves. It's hard enough to be yourself yes. these days and not be able to be somebody. It's and, a privilege. Yeah, it's a privilege to pretend to be someone else. So if you are struggling, then reach out to us. We can maybe shed some light on it. Reach out to, to Sam. Grab his book now. Sam, there are some more questions I want to talk to you about. Like, what happens to older gay men? Um, because I spoke <laughs> to my brother. Put out to pasture. That apparently, they just, you just become gentlemen who share. You glue. You open it. Open up a tea, sh open up a tea cake shop in Brighton. But apparently, it's something. That, it's like a topic that isn't talked about. That basically, no, I'd love, to talk, I'd, love to, I'd love to talk about that. Actually, well, so I want to know because apparently, it. it's the biggest fear of. But we'll get you back on to talk Sam's about a, that. Sam's a real, real journalist. So like, he's had these conversations. He's written these articles. He's asked these questions. So we do need to get. We, him back we will on. get you back on, Sam. You're brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank um, you. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you after all these years, James. Actually, it's wait, what? We'll, we'll have a nice night out. You. Yeah, we will do. I'm, We'll have a night. I'll stay away from your letterbox. Um, <laughs> Find you guys around a dark corner. Yeah, I, Chloe, I just, I just tried it for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about it for a while. Yeah, exactly. I just want to try it. He said, you know, never try it, never know. Um, anyway, this is Couples Quarantine. That was episode 14, I think. Uh, please share, please subscribe. Um, we're available on YouTube as well. Uh, obviously, a podcast and all your love, wherever you get your podcast from. I'm Jess Haskell. I'm Chloe Midley. That was Sam Dowler. We love you. Thank you.